Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. I pray that the blessings of God are operating in your life and that you see them because the Lord is good. He's worthy to be praised and saints, whether we see it or not, we're blessed of the Lord and highly favored. He's, he's been better to all of us than we deserve. And I thank him. Now, my friends, Thank you for your patriotage. Thank you for the way you watch. Thank you for the way you tune in. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. You guys are fantastic. And may the Lord continue to bless you and keep you. Now, when you normally tune in and you watch this segment that we release weekly, you get to see this. Now, this morning, had you drove past and you saw the hot box where the electrical is kept, you would have noticed that this was attached to it. Some vandals, some people who did not get our permission stuck on our hot box out there in, in front of the church, my f and my soul and my soul and my soul and my soul. Listen to this. Learn about safe, effective abortion pills at abortiononourownterms.org. Now, my friends, these are some wicked people. They did not get permission to vandalize our property. They did not get permission to stick this thing. Gary, I want to show it again. On our beautifully decorated hot box. Um... And you can't pull it off. So we got to figure out what to do. We may have to redo the whole thing. And they better pray to, that they ought to thank God that yours truly didn't catch them in the act. Uh, when we protest at the abortion clinics, when we stand and fight for life, the life of the unborn, there's a small slither of, uh, of land, a small strip that we're able to even stand in protest on. The laws are clearly in favor of the abortionists, and yet we obey the law. Well, we've already uh, called law enforcement and, uh, and, and turned this incident in, but what a wicked thing to do. And they know that this church is uh, pro-life, which all churches are if it's a real church. Now, if you are a church and you are pro-choice and you are pro-abortion church, how about stop? Let's break up that oxymoronic combination. How in the world can you call yourself a church and then be for the slaughter of the unborn? The devil is a liar. The Bible says this, among many other things that would take place in the last days and, and, and as society would grow uh, even more wicked, in Romans chapter number one and in verse 30, you, you see where Paul mentions backbiters, haters of God. Look at this, despiteful, proud, bolsters, and look at this, inventors of evil things. Inventors of evil things. Look at this, for women who are pregnant and desire abortions at the gestational age, by the last menstrual period dating, uh, 11 weeks and zero days. The two options for induced abortions, listen to this, are medical abortions with misopristone, I hope I pronounced that right, Gary, and the misopristol, or a procedural abortion performed with uterine aspirations. Uh, these people are evil. These people are wicked. And I plan to uh, show this. I'm going to show this tonight in the service. And I pray that you will share this uh, just as a, a, out of a matter of respect. Why would you put this on any church property? What does having access to an abortion pill has to do with worshiping the God of the Bible? What does it have to do with church? See, these people, these people know no limits. They show no respect. 
They have a bloodlust for the uh, for the most innocent in our society, and that is the unborn. Perhaps this is one of the reasons there is not the outcry and the outrage as we thought we would see with regards to the, the, the what have to, took place in Israel on October the 7th. You know the things that were done to little babies, babies being beheaded, people being disfigured and all of that. Well, if you're in the abortion industry, then uh, that's part and parcel of the procedure. And so here we are. We're in a wicked day, but my friends, we're going to stand on the word of God. We're going to trust the Lord and we are not going to take down. I want to read something to you. Those of you who are still under the notion that perhaps a two state solution will work between Israel and uh, uh, Hamas, not the Palestinians, not all of them, but Hamas. Well, the head Hamas official. Ghazi Hamed, now he's of the terror group, when asked uh, about Israel's right to exist and all that, he said in an interview, Hamed said that Israel's existence is illogical and that it must be wiped off all Palestinian land, a term uh, the terror group uses to mean the West Bank, Gaza, Israel, minus the Golan, Golan Heights. When asked whether this meant the complete annihilation of Israel, his reply was, Hamas's reply, yes, of course. So my question to you is how can you have peace with someone who believes you do not have a right to exist? Those of you who are taking a neutral stand, well, you know, there, 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 there's a lot of wrong going on on both sides. Well, I don't see how anybody reading the Bible uh, could take that position. Uh, one group, uh, Netanyahu said this, and he, he, was, he, was very, he, was very, he was quite accurate. He said, Israel uses its missiles to protect its people. Hamas uses its people to protect its missiles. And that's one of the fundamental differences. These people don't mind sacrificing Palestinians. They don't mind. They won't mind sacrificing you nor me to uh, uh, achieve their goals and their objectives, which is the annihilation of the uh, uh, of Israel. And I'm telling you, the God of the Bible is with Israel. And I want to say to the believer out there, you need to stand on the word of God. We need to preach the gospel as never before. We need to stand up and, and be counted. Pastors, listen, you've been new, we've been neutral too long. We've been silent too long. Now I want to play for you just a portion of the speech that the vice president gave, and, and uh, she's the vice president. She's the vice president. She's not the president. So the policy that she is uh, uh, about to, you know, undertake or that they're uh, that they're introducing is not merely hers. She's she's the voice. She's the person who is saying it. But I want you to watch this, and and I'm going to join you right at the conclusion. And so today, I am proud to announce the Biden-Harris administration will develop our nation's first national strategy to counter Islamophobia. This strategy will be a comprehensive and detailed plan to protect Muslims and those perceived to be Muslim from hate, bigotry, and violence, and to address the concern that some government policies may discriminate against Muslims. For example, the so-called Muslim ban which President Biden revoked on our first day in office. Now, my question to you, my friends, is when you turn the television on, when you watch the news, when you go online, when you see all of the protests that are being done, are they protesting uh, Muslims? Is, the, is, is all this hate that's being spewed, is this hate against Iran? Is it against Iraq? Is it against Syria? Is it against 
Lebanon? Is it against Gaza? Is it against Yemen? Is it against any Islamic country? Or are they not chanting death to Israel? Are Palestinian students being told to lock themselves in the bathrooms or in rooms or to go to the ceiling because uh, there are Jews trying to break in and kill them? Uh, 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 are Muslims in Russia being attacked at the airport with a mad crowd looking for them, trying to, to break through security to get to them just in case there are Muslims on the plane. They're going to get them. Or are these things happening to Jews and Israelites? With this emphasis on Islamophobia, I would like to ask the, the current administration, don't you think your timing is a little bit off? Don't you think that you're being as tone deaf as you possibly can? You, this is a classic case uh, of blaming the victim. This is a classic reversal. And so as uh, Israelis and uh, Israel is being attacked and, and, uh, and, and, and all of this around the world, uh, anti-Semitism uh, that is uh, being expressed and expressed quite boldly, you know, uh, we hear the vice president uh, uh, talking about uh, this speech giving we're getting we're coming out with uh, a plan to combat Islamophobia. I'm telling you my friends, there's something wrong with that. We're coming down on the wrong side of these things. Now I'll tell you what Patrick Wooden is going to do and I pray that you would do the same. I'm going to stick with the God of this book. I'm going to stand on the word of God and I'm going to ask God in the midst of all of this to work miracles. I'm going to ask God in the midst of all of this war and turmoil and in the midst of all of the misinformation that is being put out there, how Israel is being misrepresented. Israel has a right and to quote the Biden administration, indeed a duty to protect itself. And those of you who are praying for the peace of Jerusalem, let me tell you something. Peace is not merely the absence of war. I just did a, 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 a interview the other day and I said, it's not merely the absence of war. You look up the word peace there. It's also security. It's having things around you that make for peace. As long as Hamas exists, Israel will not have peace. The president of Hamas has said that they're going to keep attacking and attacking uh, uh, Israel. And they're going to keep, uh, there's going to be an October the 7th and an October the 8th and October, so forth and so on. These people do not, they are against the existence of the nation of Israel. I am not against the existence of the nation of Israel, and I'm certainly not against the existence of Gaza. Israel gave the Gaza Strip back to the Palestinians, and they gave it back for peace. And look at what is happening. And right before I close, I want to say to my brothers and sisters who are watching who look like me, do your homework if you haven't. It, it doesn't take, it doesn't require a deep dive, just a little dive, or maybe a little belly splash, I don't know. But you will see that during the 60s, the turbulent 60s, when we were fighting for our rights, when we as a people were fighting to be respected, to be recognized as being 100% human. It was the Jews who marched with us. It was Jewish Americans in the South who owned businesses who were among the first to open the door and to serve us. They marched with us. And now many of them are wondering, where are the black voices? Where are the African-Americans? When it's time 
to repay the debt. Uh, where are they? Be honest, with, be honest with you, my friends. I'm asking the same question. But for those of you who understand this conflict and understand what's going on, I say to you, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray that the God of the Bible, that the God of the Bible intervenes. Pray that God, that God will move in such a manner that he will, whether he does it through the agency of the Israeli army or however he chooses to, let's pray that the God of the Bible will do what is necessary to eradicate Hamas, Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad, and all of these other terrorist groups that are attacking the nation of Israel. Let's pray for a divine inter intervention. Father, move, O oh God, on the behalf of your nation. Move, O oh God, on the behalf of Israel. Father, we do not pray against any uh, Arab citizen, any individual, but these terror organizations that in many cases, who in many cases govern these countries. Oh God, send victory. Give Israel victory. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for praying with me. And I'm going to be preaching the word of the Lord. And I want you to stand with me as we declare God's truth. And I want you to join me right here. Tonight at the Upper Room, Church of God in Christ for, you guessed it, <laughs> Bible study. Yes, this Thursday night, we're going to study the word of the Lord together because with everything that I just talked about, with everything that I just said, these little snippets and, oh my, I didn't even get to uh, George Soros and how he's been funding, here he is again, surprise, surprise, George Soros, funding pro-Palestinian groups for several years. Maybe he's the one who paid for all those signs and, and, and quality signs and things that they have that automatically appear when things like this happen. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, yeah, he's a wicked man, far left billionaire, king maker, George Soros has funneled more than 15 million since 2016 to groups behind this month's pro-Palestinian protests where demonstrators openly cheer Hamas's, Hamas militants uh, craving terrorist attacks uh, on Israel. Isn't that something? Well, let's pray and God is going to bless and God is going to intervene. Join me right here tonight. God bless.